Hello everyone and welcome to another Warhammer Quest Battle Report. If you remember last time, I actually had a team of heroes that managed to complete a mission, so we're going to continue with the adventures of these guys who I've called the Louts of Chaos. Their last game was the recommended starting adventure, Free the Prisoners. We're going to go on with the recommended early adventures, and we're going to go on to the next one, which is Skaven Curse. That is a Fountain Room objective quest. So in Miragliano, uh, let's not go to Miragliano. These guys are from the north. So some northern city, there has been some Skaven which have gone and contaminated the water supply with a bunch of warp stone. Our heroes have to go and remove it. Now, how are they going to remove it? Do they bring tongs or anything like that? No, we're just going to pick it up with our hands and chuck it away. What do you want? These are Warhammer heroes. We're in the Warhammer world. You're lucky that these barbarians don't actually try bobbing for warp stone when they get to the fountain. Anyway, the leader of this brain trust is Leaf the Leg Biter. He is my barbarian. Now you may notice that Leaf is looking a little bit different. I actually went and painted up a new model for him because after his last adventure we went to town and he got himself a throwing axe, which means he is now at plus one strength in hand-to-hand -hand combat and can also chuck it as a missile weapon. And he got himself a war helm, which is really nice. It's going to add plus two to his toughness. That brings him up to toughness six, which makes him a real tank. He also added a couple of wounds here and there in the post-game events. So Leaf is looking pretty good, but of course he's still part of the Louts of Chaos, so he still gets a bottle to take around and drink from during the quest. Now because the remainder of my warriors all have initiative 3, we have to determine which order they will go in before the game starts. And so the next on the initiative order is going to be Sir Osis of the Liver. He is my Chaos Warrior. The mighty booze hound of corn. Well, maybe not corn since he's a bit of a magic user right now. He's got his mark of chaos. He also has the warp magic chaos attribute, which means that once per game he can cast the healing hand spell, which gives everyone on the board one wound back. A really nice spell to have in reserve in case someone goes out of action. He is also afflicted with arcane knowledge, which means that when I roll a 6 on the power phase, you roll a d6 on a 1 or 2, he's stupid and can't do anything. On a 3+, plus, he casts a random spell. He also has the Chalice of Night, which he fills with beer. That allows him to automatically make a number of his to-hit rolls automatic successes. Now, right now I have six. That's actually from the last game. I rerolled that. He has got two for this game. You reroll it at the beginning of every game. So twice during this game, he can choose to automatically hit his target. He also bought himself an open helm, which means that he is also at plus one toughness, which brings him up to toughness five, which is not bad at all. He only has ten wounds, though. I also took a look at the pit fighter and realized that he probably couldn't have that dragon shield, so I sit, instead I moved that over to Sir Osis. Now halfway through this adventure I realized, you know what? Let me check this. I don't think that he can use this either. The Chaos Warrior can't use normal magic items. So he's carrying it around, but at no point in this adventure is he actually going to use it. And here we have Hundert Left Balloon, my wizard. A celestial wizard that has gone astray. His spells are Lightning Bolt, Heal Wounds, and Levitate. He has two magical items. One is the Finger of Doom Scroll, which is another spell that he can just carry around, and that is a power level six spell that just causes six wounds to something. And the other is the Ring of Life. So when he goes to zero wounds, there's a chance that the Ring of Life will just pop him right back up again. He has a power store of five power. He also bought himself a Wizard Staff, which means once per adventure I can re-roll the power score. It also stores another two power in it. He's at 10 wounds. I believe he also went up one wound in the post-game last round. And last but not least, we have Naughtiness Maximus, my pit fighter. He is up to 13 wounds, which is great. I have reread the rules for his pit armor, though. In the advanced rules, you don't just get plus one toughness all the time because it only covers certain parts of your body. Right now, he is wearing armor on his legs and his chest, which means that if a monster rolls a five or six to hit him, then it counts. If he rolls anything else, then it doesn't. He did buy himself a rope last game, so he's got that in case someone falls into a pit. He also has a mighty five heal it potions, which are just awesome healing stuff. So we're actually doing pretty well for healing in this game. Because he made a donation to a temple in town, he gets to re-roll the next failed to hit roll. And he also learned a special whirlwind attack maneuver, which means once per game he can strike every monster adjacent to him in exchange for his normal attacks. I am going to completely forget about this and not use it the whole game. I am also going to forget about his special ability when monsters arrive as the result of an unexpected event. He gets to roll in a chart. Maybe he is dumb and doesn't do anything. Maybe he gets a free attack round. It all sort of evens out, but I totally forget about it, so I'm not going to be doing that in this game. I apologize for that. 
because I feel like my guys are doing reasonably well, we are going to add a bunch of things to the event deck for this adventure. First of all, the D3 Minotaurs card is going back in. Yeah, I think three Minotaurs probably could still kill all my guys, but then again, maybe they won't, and so it's going in. The Lair of the Orc Lord cards are going in as well, and I'm going to put in a couple of custom cards that I wrote up from the blank event cards that I got in the box set. I'm going to stick with about the 2 to 1 monsters to events proportion that's from the main set. I'm just adding in a couple level 1 monsters from the level 1 monster chart that I have models for. So there are some ghouls, some zombies, some ogres, a goblin shaman and goblins, stuff like that. As far as events go, there's some traps, some other things. If I draw the card, you'll get to see what it's like. But suffice it to say, the event deck is actually getting really large at this point. But hopefully it all works out and you get to see some new things. We set up our dungeon room deck, I draw the first card, and it is the Circle of Power. So we start in a room. No monsters appear when it's the first room. So we set up wherever we like, which is in the far corner, so we can go and explore immediately. We roll our first power score of the game and we get a 6, which means I need to see if Sir Osis casts a random spell or if he goes stupid. Turns out he goes stupid, but this is actually a great time for him to do that. He stares off into the pretty colors of the warp floating around his head and doesn't get to do anything, but all we're doing is standing there while Leaf the Leg Biter goes and shines a lantern into the next passageway, which reveals a corridor. So it's a new round, we get a power score of 3 and we move down said corridor. Next round we get a power score of 2 and I move forward a bit. I arrange myself like this because I don't want any of my guys getting trapped behind people. If something goes and tries to eat us, I want to be able to move Leaf the Leg Biter and Sir Osis into the fight. Anyway, in the exploration phase we go and find a T-section. T-sections of course can be a real pain. I'm going to go and divide the remaining rooms starting with the bottom to either side. So again, this might make for a really quick dungeon or a really long one. The next round gives us a power score of 2. I go ahead and move up, again, separating my guys a little bit. Next round is a power score of 5. We're doing okay. No unexpected events so far. We're going to choose the right-hand passageway. And in the exploration phase, we find another corridor. The next round, we get a power score of 6. And Sir Osis goes and casts Resurrection. And if anyone had been dead, that would have instantly brought them back to life. I have never drawn that card before. I had no idea that it even existed. It'd be a really nice one for my wizard to pick up at some point. Anyway, Sir Osis wanders into this corridor, resurrects some long-dead skeleton who comes back to life and goes running out the front door. Who knows? We move on. We get a power score of three. We move up and we explore a guard room, which means when we run in there, we are going to get attacked by something, most likely. But before that happens, we roll a new power phase for the next round, and we get a one, which means an unexpected event comes around, and I get one of my new cards. D3 Ogres show up. Ogres are in no way worse than Minotaurs. They are quite a bit easier. They can still be dangerous, but nowhere near as bad. Especially since I roll up only one of them, and he is going to try and stomp Sir Osis. Now, this is the warrior phase, and for the first time, I'm actually going to go and use the fear rule. Ogres have fear 5, which means when I go and attack him, I have to roll a d6 and add my battle level, which for all my guys is 1. If I don't score at least a 5, meaning if I don't roll a 4+, plus, they are going to be minus 1 to hit this ogre because they are so scared of him. The wizard is also going to have all the casting values of his spells go up by 1. Now, he's not going to be casting anything anyway, because of course I only have 1 power to play with this round. In the event, Leaf and Hundred go and fail their fear tests, and Naughtiness Maximus and Sir Osis go and pass. Leaf the Legbiter goes first, my barbarian, because he is the lantern bearer. He goes and makes his berserk check, and he fails with a one, which means that he hands one wound to all the warriors in base contact with him, which is everybody, and he gets no attacks this round. Well, I've been actually pretty lucky about that so far. I haven't gotten that in quite a while, so that is okay. We go on to Sir Osis, who misses his attack. Hundred goes next. He misses as well. But not in this Maximus takes out that spiked fist of his. He hits once for four points of damage. And then he misses, but he gets a reroll because he paid a whole bunch of money to that shrine when he was in town. Which means that he then goes and hits for five more points of damage. And then he misses with his final attack. So that is nine points of damage on the ogre, which is not bad at all. He only has 13 wounds to begin with. 
But it is now the ogre's turn, and the ogre gets two attacks, which he is directing into Sir Osis. He manages to miss and then hit once. Not only that, he hits with a five or six. An ogre has a special rule that if he hits with a five or six, he does 2d6 plus his strength of four damage instead of just 1d6. When all is said and done, he goes and gets six damage through Sir Osis's armor, which definitely hurts. So it's back to the hero's turn, and we get a power score of four. Leaf the Legbiter doesn't go berserk and goes and misses with his attack because he is still scared. But Cirrhosis is up next. He goes and swings and takes the remaining wounds from the ogre and gets the kill. We draw a treasure card and we get pretty stones and I roll a lot better than last time on this. Cirrhosis is going to take that since he did get the kill and he manages to find a bunch of gemstones which are worth 500 gold. We've still got four power still remaining so Hundred goes and casts heal wounds on Cirrhosis healing him up one whole wound. The next round we get a power score of three and so we move into the guard room like this. Backs to the wall, ready for action. We draw a card and it is an event card, it is a wounded knight. So you can see there a wounded Bretonian knight has stumbled into the room and we try and help him out. Not in his Maximus is the guy who draws the counter so he's got to try and help him up. We roll a d6 and we get a really good result. It ends up with us getting a treasure card which is the Ensorcelled Blade. So that is a sword that gives us plus one to hit. This is probably the best magic weapon in the basic set. Unfortunately, I don't think that Nodinus Maximus can actually use this. Even if he can, I don't think I would give up my fist spike for it, so he's actually going to go and hand it to Leaf the Legbiter. Now, Leaf the Legbiter already got himself a throwing axe, which is plus one strength, and so it's a real toss-up whether I want plus one strength or plus one to hit. I think generally at level one, I would rather have the plus one to hit, so I modeled this new guy up to show an axe, and I immediately get a sword. Oh well, that's what you get. But after we resolve that event, we do have to draw another event card immediately, and we get six goblin archers. Not intimidated by these guys. So we roll around to the new round, we get a new power score, and the power score is six. That means we roll to see what Sir Osis does with all this extra magical ability, and he casts a random spell, and this time he gets fireball. And this is an absolutely perfect situation for a fireball. He goes and blasts three goblins with that, but he actually ends up rolling really low. He actually only manages to kill one goblin with that. The other two are completely unhurt. But we are over to Leaf the Legbiter for his first turn. He rolls a d6 to see how berserk he is. And he is very berserk. He rolls that 6 and so he gets an extra attack. And as Leaf does, he just goes and throws himself into the middle of these goblins. He's going to use that new ensorcelled blade for that plus 1 to hit. Because he doesn't need the extra strength for goblins. And he chops a bunch of goblins into pieces. He kills 3 of them just right off the bat. Sir Osis is up next. He goes and kills a goblin himself, and then with the death blow goes and wounds the last one. Hundred bravely runs up and tries to cut him with his sword. Now again, he could be using his staff, but he's at minus one to hit. He will be plus one toughness, which is nice, but he doesn't need that against the goblins, and so he's using his sword. Doesn't matter anyway, because he goes and misses. But Nightingale Maximus is there to bat clean up, takes out that fist spike of his, and just smashes the last goblin's head in, just mugs these guys, gets himself a potion of healing, which we hand to Leaf the Leg Biter because he has a sky high toughness and tons of wounds. And so if we need someone to stay alive and heal other people, that's the guy. And we still have tons of power left in the power phase, and so Hundred goes and heals Sir Osis for another five wounds. So we're doing real well, the next round gives us a power score of 2, we move up to the doorway and we explore another room, the monster's lair. So the next round we get a power score of 6 and Sir Osis goes and casts Lifebringer, he's doing real well this game. So we roll a d6 for every character that I want, they will get that many wounds back unless I roll any doubles, in which case nobody gets any wounds back. Anyway, I go and I take a chance and I roll three dice for three different characters and I manage not to roll any doubles and so everyone heals, I believe, one point of damage and we are all up to full. Sir Osis has been getting a pretty good draw of these random spells so far. We all pile into the room in the standard formation. We draw an event card and we get a squig and two squig hunters. In the right situation, these squigs and squig hunters can actually be really dangerous. The squigs have a high strength and a number of attacks, and the squig hunters themselves, they cause 2d6 plus their strength of 3 hits, so long as both of them are still alive. Still, I'm pretty confident I can make these guys not alive this round. 
So we get a power score of three and we go straight to Leaf the Leg Biter. Leaf the Leg Biter now has a bunch of kills under his belt, so he goes berserk. I believe he's adding three, so all he needs to do is roll a three or more in order to do so. He actually tries to break the pin so he can move into contact with everybody. He fails to do so, and so he just has to content himself with killing both of the Squig Herders. Sir Osis moves up into the combat, and he unfortunately goes and misses that Squig. But Hundert is there, and he goes and bonks the Squig on the head with his staff and kills it. And Nanus Maximus is left with nothing much to do. For his trouble, Hundert Luff Balloon goes and gets a fur cloak as a treasure item, so that's going to add plus one toughness to him, but every time he uses it, you gotta roll a d6. On a 1, 2, or 3, it's destroyed and can't be used anymore. So it'll be great for a small amount of time. The next round, we get a power score of 4. We move up and we explore another corridor. There is only one more card on this side of the T section. So we're going to explore this and we're either going to find the objective room or we're going to find a dead end. The next round is a power score of 6 again. Sir Osis goes and casts Lightning Bolt into the darkness. And we just move forward, ignoring whatever he's doing. And then we roll a power score of 1, which means we draw an event card, and it is an event. It is the Old Bones event, which means it could be a trap, it could be that we draw another event card, or we could get a whole bunch of treasure. Well, we don't do real well on the roll, and we just have to draw another event card. And this time we get Scabnose, the Orc Shaman, and his minions. We got a roll for his minions, and this time we get three orcs. Leaf the Leg Biter is up first, he manages to go berserk, and he kills the orc behind the group. Or in front of the group, I guess, technically. Something to note here is that shamans are placed as missile-armed troops, so they get as far away from the group as possible. If they appear as part of a room, they're going to go in the room, but to my understanding, if they appear as an unexpected event, they can go into an adjacent room. So Scabnose is actually parked over in the monster's lair, a well away from us. Sir Osis goes and misses the attack on the orc next to him, but Huntert goes and is really doing well with that staff of his and kills it. Not as Maximus not rolling real hot this round, he does hit the orc twice, but he only manages to cause one wound each time. The orcs have three wounds, so he's taken two wounds. He's almost dead, but if there is a monster that is well accustomed to getting punched in the face, it is orcs. So it is the monster phase, and we roll randomly to see what spell Old Scabnose the Shaman is going to cast, and I roll a 6, which means he rolls the bad one. He rolls Pain, which means all of my warriors take d6 wounds with no modifiers for toughness and armor. Remember, my toughness and armor is actually really good at this point, so this is going to bypass all of that. Not in his Maximus and Lethal Leg Biter both only take one point of damage, so that's not bad. But then just to even all the averages out, 100 Left Balloon and Sir Osis both take the maximum of six. That's not great because those are the two guys with only ten wounds to start with. Anyway, the Orc goes and misses Not in his Maximus, and so we are back over to a new round. The power score is two, which isn't terribly helpful. Leaf the Leg Biter moves up and finishes off that last wounded Orc, which was not really very surprising. That does mean that Sir Osis is now stuck behind everybody, so he can't actually do anything this round. Hunter Luff Balloon is next. He is going to go and move forward. He doesn't quite have the movement to get into base contact with the Shaman, so he can't actually attack this round. But Nightingale Maximus can. He goes up and he throws a series of punches into Scabnose and manages to cause a total of three wounds. Scabnose has got a pretty high toughness, so that's actually not that bad. It is the monster phase, and Scabnose the Shaman rolls the slap spell. So a big ethereal green hand just comes down and slaps Leaf the Leg Biter on the face, which actually hurts quite a bit. Leaf is going to take six points of damage. Now Scabnose is going to draw his sword and try to stab Nodinus Maximus, and he is going to miss. Scabnose is doing pretty well. He's putting out quite a bit of damage on my guys. But it is a new round, and we get a power score of six again. But it's a little bit too many bright lights and swirling colors for Sir Osis who goes stupid and can't act this round. I could move Leaf the Leg Biter now over to try and chop up Scabnose, but I think my guys have got it. I don't really want to move all that way because I do want to explore that passageway at some point. So instead I'm just going to take my throwing axe and I'm going to chuck it at Scabnose the Shaman. I need a 5 plus to hit for that. I actually do go and get it. And his strength is real good when tossing that thing, so he goes and lobs his axe right at Scabnose is going to cause 3 points of damage. I can't lob that again until I pick it up at the end of the combat, though. 
We skip Sir Osis because he's staring off into space. We go straight to 100 Luck Balloon, who's just having a fantastic game. He runs in there. We're going to use his sword because Scabnose is already attacking Nautilus Maximus. Anyway, we're going to strike true and we're going to polish off Scabnose. Well, technically Scabnose goes and puts on his invisibility ring and goes shuffling off. But it doesn't really matter because we roll a d6 and he doesn't get shuffled back into the event deck. So we're not going to be seeing him again this adventure. We do get a treasure card though, and we get the firebomb, and we're going to hand that to Nodinus Maximus because he's a hero. Hundred is also going to cast heal wounds on himself, and he's going to heal himself up four points. So with all the monsters dead, we do get to explore. So Leaf the Blegbiter goes and explores a passageway, which means that is a dead end, and our objective room is all the way on the other side of the dungeon. That's fine, get ready for some walking. We get a new power score of two, and everyone just starts shuffling back into formation. Next round, power score of three, we just move up like that. Power score of four, we move into the guard room, 100 heals Sir Osis for one. Power score of four, we move again, 100 heals Sir Osis for three this time. Power score of six, back into the T section, Sir Osis goes and casts a rebound on 100, not that that's really going to matter. We move, 100 goes and heals himself for two wounds. And then the good times come to an end and we get a power score of one. We draw an event card and we got Gorgut and Minions. This is a bad one. Apart from the D3 Minotaurs, this one might be the worst. So Gorgut is an orc boss who shows up with a bodyguard of three big uns and then more bodyguard orcs from the random chart. We don't get the worst one, we don't get the best one. He's going to show up with another three orcs. These guys are giant pains. Clearly Gorgut wasn't dead the last time we fought him. He's out for revenge. He's followed us across the old world trying to get us. And he's sprung his trap on us now. Worse yet, we're really spread out right now. So all of these guys are going to be able to attack us. We can't section off some of these big ones until we can deal with Gorgut by blocking him off with normal orcs. Even worse, Gorgut for whatever reason is really mad at 100 Luff Balloon. So he's going to attack my wizard. The rest of my guys each get a big un, and then a couple of orcs end up at the end fighting Naughtiness Maximus and Leaf the Legbiter. Now we're going to find out how good these guys are. Leaf is up first. He manages to pass his Berserk roll, so he gets an extra attack. Unfortunately, he's not in contact with Gorgut, so he can only attack the big uns and the normal orcs. He starts off attacking the big un, who is currently in front of Sir Osis, try and death blow down the line, but he only does one point of damage to the big un. Those big uns have five wounds and are toughness five, so they're really hard to take down. So I decide I'm going to try and death blow the other direction. I'm going to attack the orc on that side. I hit him, but I only managed to do one point of damage there, so no death blows. All those guys are still alive. And so kind of a poor turn for Leaf the Legbiter. Really though, I want to kill Gorgut first. Gorgut has a bunch of special rules that make him a real pain. So first off, during the power score phase, he will subtract d6 from the power score every time. So it makes it really difficult for my wizard to use spells. Second off, while Gorgut is alive, all those big ones have an extra attack and they can do a lot of damage. On a six, if they roll a six to hit, then they do an extra d6 damage as well. So they hit about as hard as a minotaur. Anyway, Sir Osis hits with his attack, but he rolls real low and doesn't actually manage to cause any damage because Gorgut has a toughness of 5. So I'm going to go and actually use my Mark of Chaos at this point. I really do want to put some damage on this guy. I re-roll the damage die, and I end up causing a total of 3 wounds to him, which is not too bad. Hunter is definitely using his staff right now. Now, the staff is always minus 1 to hit, so I'm going to hit on a 5 or a 6. So, of course, I do miss with that. But Nidus Maximus is again going to try and punch Gorgut a lot, which is not great because, you know, even though I get three attacks around, they're only D6 plus three. So I do manage to sneak two wounds through on him, but that's it. Still, that's not bad. Gorgut has 12 wounds. He's taken five. We're going to get there, but it's going to take us a while. And we're going to take some damage while it happens. So it's over to the monster phase. So first off, Hundert is being attacked by Gorgut. He's going to take four points of damage, which is not too bad. He has the staff and he has the furs to subtract some of that damage away. But unfortunately, he does roll and lose the furs. So that, that protection is gone. A normal orc goes and manages to hit Nodinus Maximus for one point of damage. Sir Osis is hit with a six from the big gun in front of him. So he is going to take six points of damage from that even through that toughness of five of his. And the orc and the big un fighting that uh, Leaf the Leg Biter with his toughness of six, well, one guy manages to sneak one wound through onto him. 
New round, and we roll a power score of 6, which is great, except that now Gorgut goes and subtracts d6 from that, but he only manages to roll a 2, so I still have 4 power score to play with, so that means that 100 is going to be able to do something this round. First off, Leet the Legbiter gets to go and throw his attacks, and he's going to try and take down that big un fighting Sir Osis, which he manages to do. Next up, Sir Osis goes and attacks Gorgut and manages to get one more wound onto him. Hunter misses Gorgut with his staff, but then he's looking at Gorgut. He's got six wounds remaining, and I've got that Finger of Doom scroll. I've got a power of four. It casts with a six. Uh, I decide that it's worth it, so I am going to spend two of my stored power. I am going to cast Finger of Doom, and I am just going to cause a straight six damage to Gorgut and take him off the board. I just want to go with the sure thing. I could have attacked with Ninus Maximus first, seen how that goes, but I think this is a good use of the stored magic. Anyway, Gorgut is defeated, and I think I made a good choice because Ninus Maximus goes and turns on the big gun and manages to miss that guy three times in a row. So that means it is on to the monster phase. The orcs fighting Leaf the Leg Biter managed to put another three damage onto him. Nautinus Maximus takes two damage, which is not really so bad. And of course, no one is currently attacking Hunter or Cirrhosis. New round, we get a power score of four. Leaf the Leg Biter is just going to try and do that death blow attack. So he starts off pretty well. He kills the normal orc, but he can't carry any further damage into the big gun. Sir Osis and Hundred both go and manage to miss. So it's down to Nautilus Maximus, who hits a normal orc, but again doesn't manage to finish him off, only causing two damage. So that was kind of a lackluster turn on the warrior's part. So we go over to the monster phase. Leaf the leg biter still fighting that big un who goes and hits him for four points of damage. Max out the damage roll on that. Even worse, Nautilus Maximus, he's got those three orcs circling around him, just punching him to death, and sure enough, they do. So Nautilus Maximus loses all his remaining wounds and hits the floor. Fortunately, I've still saved that four power for just an event like this. So Hundred goes and does some quick thinking and quickly casts heal wounds onto Nautilus Maximus, bringing him back up to six. New round, and we get a power score of five. Leaf the leg buyer is still trying to chop away at this big gun. He causes three damage to him. Sir Osis misses again. Hunter causes no damage. But not as Maximus, after being killed, just doesn't take that real well and gets real mad and kills both of the normal orcs. Back to the monsters phase, and these guys are no less angry. They are just in the middle of a big wall and are just all cheesed. Anyway, the big end just has Leaf's number and goes and kills Leaf the Leg Biter, my barbarian. Goes down to zero wounds. Hunter still has that five power, so he heals Leaf back up to three. But that was rough, because I thought, you know, I, I kind of thought that Leaf the Leg Biter was a bit of an unstoppable tank. But nope, turns out he can be brought down. The big and fighting Nodinus Maximus is no less upset. He takes six wounds away from Nodinus Maximus, putting him back down onto the floor. So now I'm out of power, so we gotta do something else. Sir Osis decides the time is right to use his warp magic and cast Healing Hands. So everyone heals up one point of damage, which is great because everyone's hurt. More importantly, of course, that brings Nodinus Maximus back up to his feet. Barely, just with one hit point on him, but still better than nothing. It is a new round and we roll a power score of one. And this is a tough choice on my part. On the one hand, we only have two big guns remaining. On the other hand, we're all really, really hurt. I decide it's not worth it. And I go and use 100 Luft Balloon staff to re-roll the power score. This time I get a much nicer power score of five. I think that was a good call. I think there's a bunch of monsters that if they had shown up at this moment in time would have really wrecked my day. We're going to just try and finish off these last two big ones and then, you know, whatever can go and ambush us. Plus, I know in the objective room, we're not rolling on the normal objective room table. I'm just going to be fighting 12 Skaven. That's not so bad. If something goes and springs out in the objective room during that fight, I think I, think I can handle it. Anyway, Leaf the Legbiter goes and returns the favor on that big gun for getting himself killed the last round. So that big gun is gone. Sir Osis moves back to help Nodinus. He causes one point of damage with his axe. Hunter misses his attack with his staff, but not in his Maximus finally goes and punches that last big unto death with his spiked fist. That is a tough fight, that Gorgut and Minions. 
But we won, we draw a treasure card, and we get the Time Freeze Ring, which is one of the best magic items in the game. It gives a whole extra warrior phase once per adventure. It is fantastic. Not, not in this Maximus gets that. I am really happy about picking up that. In the end of the round, 100 goes and heals up Ninus Maximus for 5 points of damage. And we move on to the next round where we get a power score of 4. 100 goes and heals Sir Osis for 5 more. We move up and we explore another T section. That's not too bad really. There's only 2 cards on either end of that T section. It shouldn't take us long to explore. New round, we get a power score of 4. 100 heals Leaf the Leg Biter for 2 points of damage and we move up into the T section. But the next round, we roll another power score of 1, and we get an event, the Falling Block. So a big block of stone breaks loose from the ceiling and falls directly on to Leaf the Legbiter's head. He has to make an initiative test. He has to roll d6, add his initiative. If he gets 7 or more, then he avoids the Falling Block, which thankfully he manages to do. So I move a leaf out of the way, and a Falling Block now goes and falls in that passageway, and now that's just a permanent obstacle. Can't move there anymore. Unfortunately, we have to draw another event card immediately after that, but we get Bug Off the Snotling. So, Bug Off the Snotling appears next to Leaf, having been distracted by this falling boulder, and he grabs Leaf's lantern and runs down the passageway. Honestly, I am in no way worried about this. We're going to take care of that little guy. It's just going to take a little bit extra time. Or maybe not. It's the warrior phase. I don't want to go and send a leaf down. I can't anyway. The whole passageway is blocked. So he's just going to take his axe and huck it as hard as he can at Bogoff the Snotling. He manages to hit. I need a 5 plus to hit. And then Bogoff gets like a 4 plus dodge roll, which he immediately fails. So we just go and plant an axe right on to Bogoff's head. Drops a lantern. Hey, moving on. The rest of the louts of chaos just go and assemble close to the passageway. New round, and we get a power score of 5. So, Leaf the Leg Biter goes and moves up to that right-hand passage, and we find the Fountain of Light. That is our objective room. Alright, no more exploring. Time for the final combat. In preparation for this last battle, 100 goes and heals Nidinus Maximus for 5 points of damage. It's a new round. We get a power score of four, which is great. We go and move in. We sort of form up in a little position over by the corner here. 100 heals himself for 2 points of damage. And from every corner of the room, a whole pile of Skaven rush in to try to kill us. It is a new round, and we get a power score of 1. So that means we get another unexpected event, and this time we draw the Portcullis event card. You know what? Fantastic. If we had gotten this when we were exploring the wrong way down one of those T-sections, that would have been a real drag. But this way, we seal off this objective room. That means if we get really unlucky and just fill this whole thing with monsters, that means everyone else is going to fill out outside into that T-section and won't ever be able to get into us. I am just fine with having this portcullis here. We do have to draw another event card immediately, and we get three fanatics. That also is not bad. If these Fanatics had just shown up and they would have been able to be in base contact with us, we would have taken a pile of damage and would have been really terrible. But these guys just shuffling around at the end of this huge pack of Skaven, I can do something about those guys before we ever have to actually get next to one of them. I have fought these before in the comment section of one of those videos. Someone speculated that these things could actually hurt monsters as they whirl around. I read the rules. Again, the rules are real confusing, but it says they only do damage to warriors. And in the rules, I believe they make a distinction between warriors and monsters. So if only warriors take damage, that's my guys. So, for example, when the barbarian goes berserk, he causes one point of damage to all the warriors next to him, not to the monsters. Anyway, side note, moving on to the warriors phase. Leaf goes berserk, as you would expect, and he right off the bat kills two of the Skaven. Sir Osis wants to jump forward into the opening that Leaf the Legbiter created so that he can do as much damage, but he fails to break the pin. He attacks the one Skaven that he's in contact with, but only manages to wound him. Hunter currently has no Skaven in base contact with him, so he's actually going to move into the spot that Sir Osis was trying to go to. He goes forward and adds another dead Skaven to the pile, and not in his Maximus, goes directly forward one square over the body of one of the Skaven, kills the Skaven with his punch dagger. He has a special rule where he can move into the space that was occupied by a guy he just killed. Unfortunately, he misses with the remainder of his attacks. So now it is the monster's phase. So, not as Maximus is currently fighting two Skaven who both hit and cause a total of seven points of damage to him, which is a lot. There is one Skaven fighting Leaf who fails to hurt that guy. Hundert is missed with the one Skaven that moves up to combat that guy, and Sir Osis takes no damage. 
On to the next round, and we get a power score of six. Sir Osus does not go stupid this time. We cast a random spell. We get Iron Skin. And this time, I think Ninus Maximus needs a little bit of help. So we cast Iron Skin on Ninus Maximus. That's going to give him a plus two toughness. Leaf the Leg Biter slowing down a little bit and only manages to kill one Skaven and put two wounds on another. Sir Osus kills the Skaven that he was fighting off to the side. Hunter misses. Uh, not enough Maximus manages to kill one of the Skaven that he was dealing with and then put one wound on the final one in base contact with him. So that was a pretty good round. I'm going to have to start being careful about who I kill and what my attacks do coming up because if I kill too many, then those fanatics are going to get in contact with me and going to mess up my day. So the Skaven in front of Leith the Legbiter gets a little bit mean and puts two points of damage on him. Everyone else is missed. I've got some power left for this round, so I'm going to heal Nodinus Maximus for one point of damage with 100 casting heal wounds. New round, and we get a power score of 5, which is very, very helpful. Leaf the Leg Biter goes and kills the two Skaven in front of him. Sir Osus also manages to go and kill a Skaven, which is a little bit of a problem because now that Fanatic can move through the passageway and get at Sir Osus. But Hundred Luck Balloon decides that he's going to be really brave. He does have some hit points to burn, and since armor doesn't help anyway, I guess that's as good as anything. But hopefully he can go and move into that fanatic and bonk him to death with his staff. Unfortunately, he misses, so we've got two angry fanatics whirling around back there, which could cause me some problems. We need to do something about those guys, so Ninus Maximus tries to break his pin, but he fails to do so. So instead, he's just got to attack the Skaven in front of him. He kills the first one and then advances into his square. And then he goes and kills the second one. And so now that pathway is clear to a Fnatic as well. But Ninus Maximus is an absolute beast. He moves into that square that where that Skaven was and goes and throws his final attack into the Night Goblin Fnatic and kills him as well. So at least I don't got to worry about that guy. But now there is an extra passageway free for the Fnatic behind the other one to come and attack me. I decide that I really don't want to do that. I do have this treasure card, this firebomb, and, you know, Nodinus Maximus has such, had such a carnage-filled turn already. We decide to prime that firebomb, toss it on to those last two fanatics. Unfortunately, the rolls aren't quite as good as I would have hoped. I do manage to blow up one, but the other one is still alive. However, we do still have a whole bunch of power left in the round. I was saving it in case anyone went down to zero from hit points, but I could just use it with a lightning bolt. And if I roll okay, I should be able to finish off that last fanatic. I decide that it's worth it. So, Hunter goes and uses four of the remaining power to cast lightning bolt onto that fanatic, the last remaining monster on the table, and he blows him up. So all the monsters have been cleared off and we are in great shape. Except, of course, we do have to go and carry off a bunch of this poisonous warp stone. It is a new round, and we get a power score of 5. All my guys are pretty beat up. I believe pretty much everyone has around 8 hit points, except for Leaf, who has 4. Without listening to anyone else, Leaf just goes and grabs a huge armful of warp stone, hauls it out of the fountain, but he takes exactly 4 damage. I saw some of those low number comes up, and, ah, is he going to live? No, he doesn't. But that's okay, because we got a power score of 5, so 100 is right there to bring Leaf right back to life, and heals him up to 3. Sir Osis is next. We got a bunch of potions and stuff like that that we can throw around, but let's see if I even need it. So Sir Osis goes and gathers up his pile of warp stone. He managed to only take 7 points of damage, so he is still alive. Hundred is next on the order. He is going to take 7 points of damage, again, just staying alive with like 1 hit point remaining. And then finally, it's Naughtiness Maximus, who is really, really hurt, actually. But I decide I'm going to use one of his healet potions. I roll a 6 for the number of wounds that it restores, which means that it doesn't run out. So he goes up a fair amount. He's going to take, again, the perfectly average number of 7 points of damage, be just fine. And so we have actually successfully completed this quest. We've taken out all the poisonous gunk from the fountain, the water supply of whatever town we're nearby, and we are big bold heroes. Not only that, but I get to roll on the objective room treasure. Now, the rules for this are really fuzzy. Depending on what section of the book you read, it works in different ways. But the section I am choosing 
to read this as is that when you are allowed to take a treasure card and you happen to be in the objective room, you can instead roll on the objective room treasures, which are kind of some really nice things. They're like artifact level stuff. So since we defeated those three fanatics in the objective room, instead of drawing a normal treasure card, we are going to roll on the role play book objective room treasure and we get the jade amulet the enchanted jade, jade amulet now actually i'm not terribly impressed with this uh, every round you can roll a d6 and on certain rolls you get like one hit point back and on one it crumbles into dust so really it's not that great on average you're probably going to get only a couple of hit points before this thing just goes away so i give it to naughtiness maximus and i'm a little bit disappointed the good news is, is that we, again, have made a whole pile of gold. We fought all the way up and down this dungeon, and we fought a lot of big monsters, and so we've got a fair amount of cash. I would like to go to another town, and I would like to spend it. I would like to have some shields for some of my guys. I wouldn't mind just doing a little this and that. So we head out. And it is a mistake. We should not be traveling at this time of year. So first thing, we need four rolls on the events as you try, like the traveling events chart to see what happens. The first one, we roll 66. 66, that's got to be good, right? No, it's like the worst one. So we roll a storm. And so everybody has to lose a piece of treasure. Leaf the Leg Biter goes and loses the Dragon Shield. Fine, no one's actually used it the entire time since I've got it. But Hundred is a bad one. He has the Finger of Doom Scroll, which is nice, and the Ring of Life, which is also really good. I gotta lose one of those. I lose the Finger of Doom Scroll, and it really hurts, because that has kind of saved me a couple of times. Ninus Maximus only has his one piece of treasure, and that's the Time Freeze Ring and the Enchanted Jade Amulet. Ugh, I probably should have lost the Enchanted Jade Amulet, but I lose the Time Freeze Ring instead. At least maybe I can get it back if I draw it again. The good news is Sorosa doesn't have any treasure. You know, that's what you get for being a Chaos Warrior, and you don't get to use any of these magic items, so he doesn't actually have any. We move on. That was roll number one. Roll number two, we get a fire in the camp. Everyone has to roll, and it turns out that Lethal Legbiter loses half of his gold. So he loses like 400 gold because his pants catch on fire in the night, and it all melts into slag. Third roll. Third roll is a quake, like an earthquake happens. Jeez, we've had a storm, a fire, and an earthquake, and we have like three options. We can go straight to the next adventure, we can go back and start all these rolls anew, which I really don't want to do, or we can expend a piece of rope. Hey, we have a piece of rope absolutely fine we use that it gets broken but you know fine we're moving on final roll we get another storm roll 66 again and everyone loses another piece of treasure so there goes leaf the leg biters potion of healing a really nice thing hunter loses his ring of life and naughtiness loses his enchanted jane amulet so you know, for 100 and Ninus Maximus, I was agonizing over which piece of treasure to lose. It doesn't matter, because I lost both of them. But finally, we get to town. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to send everyone to the general store, and we're just going to buy a piece of rope. And the reason is, is because there's one of these daily events you can get where it turns out you're sold something fake. And so I don't want to buy anything really expensive and then have it turn out to be a fake and lose all that money like I did with Sir Osis's shield. So, Ninus Maximus goes to the general store, buys a piece of rope. His daily event is that he has an uneventful day. Great, except that as a pit fighter, you roll on a separate chart when you get uneventful days, and it turns out the people that I owe a bunch of money to for buying my freedom or whatever come out and they go and beat me up and steal a piece of treasure. Well, haha, -ha, joke's on you. I already lost all my treasure in the storm, so moving on. A uh, hunter goes to general store, buys some rope, goes on a snipe hunt, and he's fine. Sir Osis goes to the general store, buys a piece of rope, and he gets sent to jail because he's a big scary chaos warrior and that's probably illegal. Anyway, all my guys have to uh, pay a bunch of money and convince everyone that no, he's not really a chaos warrior. He, uh, he just really likes the color red. Anyway, finally, Leaf the Leg Biter goes to the general store, buys a piece of rope, and he goes to the steam bath and he gets plus one wound. Well, that's actually really nice. Uh, he's got a big pile of hit points now. Day two. So, Ninus Maximus, I don't really have much for him to do. He's going to go to the fighting pit, though. He manages to find the special location. He rolls a thing where he gets the whirlwind attack. He already has that. I'm not going to worry about it. 
but he does find at the pit fighter place he does find knee spikes which are a really nice piece of equipment so i can attach those to my knee and kick someone for a plus one attack at strength two every round so he's up to four attacks anyway i can't find any extra gladiator armor so we just go into the daily event riotous living i have to spend an extra 50 gold because i just am living the high life in town Hunter goes to visit the Wizards Guild. I'm going to try and switch out that Levitate spell because I don't like it. I do manage to erase it from my mind, but I don't manage to get a new spell. So I've actually lost a spell. Uh, daily event, I have to pay a bunch of gold for an investment. So I pay a bunch of gold right now, but every time I visit a town, maybe they'll give me some gold back. Maybe they won't. Sorosis goes to the armor, buys himself a shield. We get a temple donation daily event. I have to pay a whole bunch of gold and I reroll my next attack roll that misses in the next adventure. Not, not a great trade. Finally, Leaf the Legbiter goes and buys a shield at the armor, and he gets into a fight later on, and somehow this absolute tank of a barbarian loses this fight to some random mook in town, and he loses all of his remaining money. So, I'm out of money, I get tossed out of town, at least nothing else bad is going to happen to Leaf. A bunch of people have to pay living expenses, a bunch of people have to pay uh, double that because they have a pet dog that they picked up in the last round. And we move on to day two. Don't have to roll for Leaf the Leg Biter anymore, so not as Maximus. He goes to the fighting pit. Uh, he rolls a pretty good result. Someone uh, just bought their freedom and is feeling in a generous mood, so he gives me 120 gold pieces to pay towards my freedom. Now I gotta pay like a total of 4,000, so that doesn't really help me that much, but I'll, you know, I'll take it. The great news is, is that I managed to find another set of knee spikes. So now I've got five attacks around. Anyway, daily event, I get betrothed to somebody. Someone says I'm going to marry someone else. They get me at knife point. And I got two choices. I can either get married or I can leave the settlement. Honestly, getting married sounds kind of funny. Maybe in addition to all these chaos hounds that I've been picking up, maybe I'll actually paint up a model for a wife. But actually, I've been doing real well for Nonius Maximus. I actually want him to leave before he loses more money or treasure or something like that. Actually, all his treasure's gone already. So I just skip out in the middle of the night, and now I don't have to worry about Nonius or Leaf. Hunter, I'm afraid to send him anywhere. It hasn't been going great. I haven't been enjoying my time in town. So I don't do anything, but I roll another daily event. And it's investment again. So he's just going on a buying spree. Buying all kinds of junk bonds. Anyway, so now I got two investments and I'm down a bunch of money. Which I'm not really spending right now. So I guess that's okay. Finally, I decide I really want to send Sir Osis of the Liver to a Chaos Temple. To try to get him some new Chaos Attributes. Because really offensively he's he's not doing great and i wouldn't mind some mutations to try and help him out there is a chance that he can get some unfortunately i can't find the special location so i have to go on to my daily event and i just get tossed out of town i roll a double one and so they just pick me up throw me out of town and i guess that's what you get for just going up and down the streets of middenheim saying say where's the secret chaos temple can anyone point me in that direction i guess they didn't like that so okay fine you know, not the best post game. I lost like all my treasure, but my guys are definitely getting a lot more powerful. So now, Leaf the Legbiter especially, he picked up another hit point. He's now up to toughness seven. Cirrhosis of the Liver is now up to toughness six. I can get all this treasure back, right? All I have to do is fight a bunch of monsters and I'll, I'll get more treasure cards. And that is two adventures in a row that I have won. So this is about as well as I've ever done. You may notice I am in no rush to go up to battle level 2. And the reason for this is, is because long ago I did manage to hit battle level 2 just way back in the day. We tried adventure, we're all excited, rolled up on that battle level 2 monster chart, and they just smoked us. Those battle level 2 monsters are a lot harder. You get good advances going up, you guys get fairly powerful, but the monsters do too. And so I want to get plenty of equipment, plenty of treasure. I want to be all nice and ready for the, when the time comes to advance to that second level. The downside is, is that because of all this equipment that I have bought, I really kind of want to paint more models. I want to make a new Nautinus Maximus with his knee spikes and his accurately represented gladiator armor. I wouldn't mind getting a Cirrhosis and a Leaf the Leg Biter with their new shields. So maybe I'll take a little break and I'll try and paint those guys. 
But for right now, another great victory for the Louts of Chaos. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them below. I've been appreciating the comments so far. And I will see you on the next one.